Well hello Bite Bashers, it's your pal Al here once again with another more modern thing this time. It's the Chromecast Ultra. So on this video I'm going to unbox it as well as show you how to set it up and I'm also going to give you a brief review. So let's just start off with the, the uh, Chromecast itself. Firstly, there has been three generations of the Chromecast starting in 2013, the second in 2015 and now the Chromecast Ultra which uh, ended up in our stores around the beginning of 2017. Although for me here in New Zealand, little old New Zealand, yep, we only received it in our 2018 sometime. As you can see there's also been a Chromecast audio and also a lower powered uh, third generation of the existing uh, of the, the initial Chromecast. The one we're talking about here obviously is the Chromecast Ultra. And the main difference of the Chromecast Ultra is it does Ultra HD or 4K as some of us know it as. So having a look at the side of the box here, you can see that they're trying to make some comparisons with the original Chromecast or maybe the Chromecast 2 with the new Chromecast Ultra. As you can see here, obviously up to 4K uh, Ultra HD and HDR, yep, tick. Then the next one, Ultra Fast Load Times versus Fast Load Times on the Chromecast which is a bit, in, uh, a bit unusual. I personally haven't seen any difference with the load time so far, but perhaps uh, mileage does vary. I haven't run them side by side, but just the feel of it, haven't seen any differences. The next one, Wi-Fi and Ethernet support versus Wi-Fi only. This is important, especially as you're streaming 4K uh, to, your, uh, to your television set from your mobile phone. Having a look at the front of the box, you can clearly see that they're advertising some services which are very well known, YouTube, Netflix, Lightbox, Neon, which is a New Zealand uh, Sky uh, based service. There's also FanPass, which is the Sky based sports service, YouTube Kids, Spotify, Plex, and millions of other um, applications, or at least hundreds of thousands of other applications available on the Google Play Store. And just in case you needed affirmation of this, it's also on the side of the box. On the bottom of the box, the usual disclaimers are listed. It needs a TV with an HDMI port, an accessible Wi-Fi network or an Ethernet connection. Requires an Android, iOS, Windows or Mac OS computer or mobile device and uh, it must be up to date. On the top of the box, it got this lovely little pulley doohickey thing, uh, so I'm just going to pull that off and have a look inside. Inside you can see there's the Chromecast itself, the offending article. Um, I'll just pop it out from this little lip and you can see there it's, uh, it's got a red coloured HDMI port. Don't know why it's red, perhaps that signifies 4K. You can see it's got a little magnet there, it um, clips back and uh, attracts it to its back of the, the, um, the Chromecast. So it must be good for hiding it away from the back of your television set. Also coming in the box is the usual warranties, disclaimers and a quick setup guide. What you can see here first of all is the quick setup guide, one, two and three, it's as easy as that. Maybe not quite and that's the purpose of this video but basically plug it into the power supply, plug it, plug it into the TV, download the Google Home app and off you go. Uh, the second uh, is a limited warranty card, also it tells you about your pacemaker which I found quite interesting. Not quite sure why this might have anything to do with your pacemaker but there you go. Finally inside you will see the power supply, it's got this little uh, very satisfying label on it that I love to just rip off straight away and if you have a look at the underside of the power supply you will be able to see that ethernet connection port. So on the back of the box it says that the device is simple to set up, plug it into an HDMI port and then connect it to your Wi-Fi and you're off and away, just use your phone as the remote. Let's find out how true that may be. So after much fiddling around behind the wall mounted TV set you can see here that I finally got it all set up. So first things first I plugged the Chromecast into the available HDMI port as it says and then took the power cable and plugged that into the uh, device and then finally into the wall switching on to HDMI 1 on the remote control. Now um, just suffice it to say that fortunately on this device the power cable is a lot longer than the power cable in 
previous um, devices. So it, used to, it, it still runs over USB, uh, micro USB that is. Um, so yeah, a lot easier this time because of the longer power cable. So that's, that's a definite thumbs up for this device. So you should see the same picture when you set it up as well. If not, then, um, then don't worry, hopefully. Have a look at chromecast.com forward slash setup. Um, okay, so next I downloaded the Google Home app, as it says on the screen there, and I downloaded it on my Android device. Let's get stuck in and show you what happened. So you can see I've downloaded the app here. It's available on iOS and Android from the Google App Store and the iOS Store uh, as well. Uh, you can see if you've already used your uh, this app before, you'll see existing devices that you have in your home. So this is probably not what you're going to see if you don't have a Chromecast device already. Up on the top left device, uh, sorry, the top left hand corner, it says set up one device. And you can also do other settings as well as media here. So I'm going to press set up one device. You'll be able to control devices and services in this home. So you can add other home other areas as well if you like, offices and so forth. I'll just say it's all in the same building and home. Just going to look for devices. And we scroll down now. We can see that it says Chromecast Ultra found. Would you like to set up Chromecast Ultra 1532? So looking at the screen once again, you can see there down at the bottom left, Chromecast Ultra 1532. So it's actually found the device by using some uh, sort of audio technology. So down here we'll just say, yep, let's set up the device. And what this does briefly is disconnects from your home Wi-Fi so it can talk directly to the TV on the Wi-Fi. Okay, now it's connected to the device and you should see a code on the TV screen. So the code is presented there, C2F9. I'm just verifying that code there. Yep, that's right. You can, there's a survey here, I'll automatically give crash reports and then so forth. I'm not a big fan of sharing my information with uh, Google, so I'll just say no thanks. Where is the device? Well, it can be wherever you like, so I don't think this really makes that much of a difference, but it, um, I guess it really is down to where you, uh, it, it, if you've got multiple devices, how it identifies itself, so forth. So I'm just gonna say, in this case, it's in the living room. Um, and then I'll go next. And then you can choose the Wi-Fi that you're on. So I'm on this one here. In order to get 4K streaming quality on your Chromecast Ultra, it's recommended that you connect to a five gigahertz Wi-Fi network. Now, I do have a five gigahertz Wi-Fi network in this building. Unfortunately, the, st the signal strength of the five gigahertz one isn't as strong as 2.4. So bear that in mind whenever you're using Wi-Fi. 2.4 has a much longer range, but also far less bandwidth. So if you have problems with getting five gigahertz in, in wherever your Chromecast is, my recommendation is one of two things. One, either get a Wi-Fi extender. Two, move your wireless access point closer to where your TV is, if possible, or your Chromecast is. Or thirdly, use the ethernet connection on the power supply and that will deliver the ethernet connection, the, the speed, the full unlimited speed of your um, internet all the way there. So let's just uh, take that 2.4 for the, the purposes of this example. It knows, obviously this phone here knows the Wi-Fi password already because I've already used it to be on the Wi-Fi here. So I'm just gonna say, save the password for it and, and, and then put it to the Chromecast next and now if you have a look at the TV it's connecting to the same Wi-Fi as just been set up that just takes a moment right, it's going to download an update back down on the phone it's linking to the device just giving another status update okay there's an opt-in mail thing there to let you know about new developments of the hardware, so on for so forth. I'm not fussed with that. Um, so now you can see the um, the review of what you've actually done. Devices you've set up, living room TV with services Netflix, and uh, there's Wi-Fi 2.4. So let's just do that. Um, it's now 
updating once again so that will reboot the Chromecast and uh, we'll take a few more minutes. Okay, finish off setup in the home app and get to know your device. It still reckons it's um, updating on the phone. Uh, so if you see this as well, um, don't worry about it. it. It should write itself after a few moments. There we go. Living room tea. So that took about three or four minutes, even though the um, the device that on the TV was ready on the phone, it still said it was updating, even though the updates had concluded. So sometimes that's a bit of a mismatch. You just got to be aware of that. But don't don't worry too much if it takes a little bit longer than expected. So we're in the Netflix app here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to demonstrate how to use the normal Netflix app to um, cast to your TV. So to do that, find the content that you want to play. When you press play, obviously it will just play on your mobile phone as normal. So I'll just scroll along and you can see that the movie's playing here on the mobile phone. If I press the cast button, which is up in the top right hand side, you can see this device, which is the phone obviously, but underneath that you should be able to now see living room TV because the living room TV ahead is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as the phone. So if I click on living room TV now, it should then swap the device over and play on the uh, the Chromecast. You can see the display on the phone has changed to show that it's casting. And so the film's playing now on the television. If I go back to the phone, you can see the device is set up now, not to play the movie, but to have it as almost like a remote control and you can scrub fast forward and it will move to a later part in the movie just like that. I can stop, I can pause and so forth. I can rewind 30 seconds. And um, fundamentally when you're finished, press stop. And then if you press the cast button here again, you can disconnect the TV. Okay, so hopefully you've managed to get everything set up just the way you like it. It's all working fine. Don't forget to check in at the Google Home application. Uh, they do seem to add new features there all the time. I'm just showing you here how to link the Spotify account to your device. So if you use Spotify, uh, it allows you to link it with um, easily. Um, so do check in on that application. As a quick wrap up, really, all I would say is if you haven't used the Google Chromecast before, this is definitely the device to go for, especially if you use a 4K television set. If you don't, uh, you could get away with using the more recently released third generation of the Chromecast, but basic, bear in mind that that's the cut down version of the Chromecast. It's, the, it's more like the second generation. It's not the one that provides you this 4K. So the device fundamentally it isn't an awful lot different from the existing uh, Chromecasts out there. It's a little bit faster. It's got better specs. It's um, it, it has the Ethernet adapter, obviously, which is helpful for people who don't have a fast Wi-Fi um, service in their house. But ultimately, the device is very similar to one those that uh, have come before it. Um, but it is it does work very well, and I have no uh, hesitations in recommending it. So if you've got any questions or comments, then please hit me up below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, and also, if you could, subscribe to me and, uh, and keep it going. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.